guys. Um, I've got my coffee, my tiny little coffee. I just, I saw these glass mugs the other day and thought, I'm going to start drinking my coffee out of these glass mugs because it just makes me feel a bit fancy. I've made that too sweet, but also, um, it's just not enough coffee. So I'm basically making like half mugs of coffee in these little glass, glass cups, mugs. Do you still call it a mug if it's glass? So today we are talking about empties from April. There's a lot of stuff here, pretty much all Bath and Body, but I'm gonna kick off with the few things that aren't, because I know most of these are heavily Bath and Body, and if you're here for makeup, you know, there's not a lot, but there is one thing and one or two skincare things. So I'm gonna start with the makeup item, and that is the Naked Skin One and Done Hybrid Perfection Complexion Perfector. Made that up. Um, I bought this a couple of years ago. I picked it up again recently. I don't know if I did a video here or on Instagram um, where I wore this, but I was, trying to find something where every single day during lockdown I could put on a little bit of something to feel more put together, a little bit less slobby. Um, and that was the thing that I pulled out. And I wore it and I was just like, I don't think I like this anymore. And I don't know whether or not it's because it's old um, or if I just remember it as being something more, but it didn't have a lot of coverage. It's now not something that I would rush out to purchase. Whereas I remember really enjoying it. I do think that it's just... I, I kind of had it in my mind that it was not a million miles away from the It Cosmetic CC cream, and it's considerably less coverage than that. There's nothing wrong with that, but I just didn't think it was giving me anything. That being said, it's quite old. What I did want to mention is um, this Lumen, which is expensive. In fact, one moment. So I believe Look Fantastic sent me this, um, along with a couple of other things like over the past few months, and I've never mentioned this, but they gave me a code, um, Miss Budget, which gives you 20% off. Hopefully this is included in that because I've mentioned this a bunch of times and um, I'm not I'm not getting any kind of kickback. I'm not being sponsored in any way to talk about this, but I've been really enjoying it and I keep mentioning it. And I, I found that the other day and thought, oh my God, I'm sure Look Fantastic have always got some kind of deal on anyway. I, I don't think I've ever paid full price on that website as it is. But I now feel kind of bad that if you have purchased it on the basis that I have been talking about it so much, you could have got 20% off. So I apologise. Um, the colour that I've got is Universal Medium. It's just amazing. I It's like a skincare brand basically that has branched out into colour cosmetics and so when you put it on it feels like skincare, it feels fresh, it feels cooling. Um, I'm not encouraging people to spend money on superfluous items right now, although I definitely have. I, I treated myself to, to something big. Um, small, but big. Uh, but when it comes to makeup and stuff, I'm very aware that right now we don't need people pushing products and telling us we need things because we definitely don't. But if you were going to treat yourself to something and um, you were looking for something you could use right now, this is just awesome. Like I said, pricey, uh, but it's like cool on the skin, a little bit of coverage, just really, really lovely for right now. And since I've been in lockdown, I've just completely fallen in love with it. Worth mentioning, I'm not wearing it today. I'm actually wearing this, which is not my favourite at all. This is in my um, thoroughly disappointing products bin, but I am trying to see the products that I kind of wrote off really quickly. I'm trying to go back and see whether or not I can make them work for me. Um, so I'm wearing it with a bunch of other things today and it's fine. It's not as horrendous as I remember it being, but I'm looking in the mirror, but um, it's just not amazing. It's just... It was disappointing. Anyway, moving on. So we're done with the Naked Skin one and done, and I don't think I'll be buying again. Um, and I also have a couple of skincare products. The Pixie Jasmine Oil Blend, this was sent to me. Didn't like it for one major reason. Hate the smell of jasmine. It smells like wee. It just does. It smells like wee. I don't understand why people like the smell of jasmine. Everything, like everything that I've ever had, or like room sprays, perfumes, oils, for a while, I was just like, what is that? There's a smell and it's a horrible smell. And it took me ages to identify that it was jasmine and anything with jasmine in it, I hate it. So I used it up like begrudgingly, but I really like Pixie facial oils. And so I did use it up, but I did not like the smell at all. And I'm not a rose scented fan um, or a, a fan of rose scents, but that's a completely different kettle of fish. I, I'm not a fan of that, but I don't really, really dislike it. If you were smelling, if you had a rose perfume, um, I wouldn't be like, ugh, get away from me. Not that I would if you were wearing a jasmine perfume, but you know what I mean. I also used up this, which I purchased 
we're going to say two years ago because that's when I went to Greece and this is all in Greek. It's the La Roche-Posay Cerezinc. Um, if you have got oily, blemish-prone skin, this is really, really good. It's got um, zinc, duh. It's got zinc um, in it. It's a zinc sulfate soothing cleansing. Zinc sulfate solution cleansing and soothing um, is what this is. Now, if you are someone who has used Sudocrem on their spots, you will enjoy this. Uh, if that's something that your skin reacts well to, responds well to, then you will like this. It's just a facial spray, helps with oil, helps with breakouts, um, and I really enjoyed this. Whether or not I would buy it again right now, I don't know. I'm not massively, massively breakout prone at the moment, but I would purchase it for my daughter who struggles with acne. Right, I've got some dry shampoos. What a shocker. How many people are going through dry shampoo? Like, there is no tomorrow. Terrible choice of words. Um, Batiste Blush. I just had a, a few of them in and I'm not buying any more right now because, I mean, I'm not going anywhere. Um, but I did kind of use the rest up while we were in this situation. Uh, so this massive one, blush, it's fine. My all-time favourite is tropical, but it's a very heavy scent. And especially over the winter time, I try to use different ones. So blush was fine. Uh, I actually bought the original. I think it was either the only one there or it was way cheaper than the rest because this is my least favourite scent. I'm not a fan of this at all. But... I do still like Batiste dry shampoo. Am I like the only one still buying it? Because whenever I watch videos where people are talking about dry shampoos that they're using, they always reference, do you remember when we used to use Batiste? Like, like it's now the pariah of the dry shampoo world. Am I the only one who still really enjoys it? I still maintain that most of these other ones, the ones that say they have no residue and all of that, which just pause because I'm going to talk about something that really is legitimately amazing in, in a minute but I have tried so many and most that say they leave no residue are not heavy enough for very oily hair and my hair is oily and so I'm using up all the ones that I don't like right now and most of them if they've not got that kind of like grippy makes your hair feel knotty and horrible um like volumizing dry shampoo don't like that either then they don't really do anything now one the, my all-time favourite now, this is like, <sighs> Angel should be singing as you look upon this, is the Lee Stafford Keep It Clean. This was originally sent to me. I have purchased it many times since. Um, it's expensive for me for dry shampoo because I'm used to spending like two to four pounds-ish. I think this is in the region of six, I want to say. It's an expensive dry shampoo, but when I used this for the first time, I'd, I'd blown my hair out. And I think I was on like day three or something. And I was like, uh, I'll just try this new one because I always hate new dry shampoos. I'll try this new one. I'm prepared to wash my hair before I go anywhere anyway. So it's no big deal. I put it in um, and I didn't even like rub it into my hair or anything. I kind of just left it as I was walking around the house. And then I looked in the mirror, it had all absorbed and I could run my fingers through my hair. It was like I'd actually washed my hair. Now Batiste is not like that. Batiste will, there's a residue. If you can feel it in your hair, there's a residue and it's not, you haven't got quite the same bounce. You haven't got quite the same shine. Um, it's not, it's not the same. Your hair looks dull when you use Batiste, but you know, it needs must. This is like a completely different animal. This is, it gives me the same thing that Batiste does because my hair is very oily, but it makes it feel legitimately clean. It's incredible. It is incredible. If you are a Batiste fan, I would recommend that you try that. I think anyone would like it, but especially if you're like diehard Batiste like me and you think that nothing else is ever going to work, try that. I also really liked last year the Colab. There was like an energy one that was like green and blue. And I thought, oh, the Colab dry shampoo is actually not bad. I thought it wasn't very good for my oily hair, but now, but it turned out it was really just the one that was like the energy one. I think that had a bit more oomph to it. Okay, obviously, obviously. We have more of these. I have like them stacked and stacked. We don't need more than two as a placeholder to show you. I'm using these all the time. Obsessed. Obsessed. Um, I'm, Lee is doing the shopping right now. And it's like the ultimate, um, you know, like love languages and stuff. Love languages are very interesting. And if you have the time to learn about them right now, you definitely should. Because it will help every relationship in your life. Not to put any more on it than it, it, legitimately. I am not over overstating that is the word I'm looking for. See, Corona brain. Um, 
you just have to learn your love languages, learn the love languages of yourself, everyone that you love, everyone that you interact with, and you will have an easier time in life. Um, so as I was saying, my love language is not gifts. It's not, I do not receive love in gifts. However, thoughtfulness and stuff is undeniable. And when Lee brings me home a box of Radox bath salts with the shopping, that feels like the ultimate, the ultimate like professing of love because it just does. I, don't, I can't explain it. My, my love language is, um, act, well, I suppose it works the same way. Acts of service is how I receive love. So that's like my top, that's how I want to receive love. So if Lee went and filled my car up with petrol, that would be like top of the pops. Went and got me something from the shop so I didn't have to go. Those are the things. So I suppose, yes, it does fall in with my love language. Um, I, I show love often in gifts. Um, Lee receives love in, um, what is it called? Is it physical touch? Physical touch is literally like nearness. So if we, I'm just, we're going to talk about this properly, but I, just to give you an example, if we were sitting on opposite ends of the sofa all night, there would be a, um, a physical and an emotional distance. You can kind of feel the tension. Um, it's not like it's tension as in like anyone's angry with anyone, but you can feel it once you realize what it feels like when it's not there. So if I go and sit next to him, there's an automatic change, like shift in like body language and the vibe. Um, I'm not doing a very good job of explaining this, but myself and my friend Charlotte are really into this. So maybe at some point we'll do like an Instagram live where we talk about this and I'll put it up somewhere so you can see it um, after the fact. But I'm really, really into it because when, once you understand other people's, like for example, Emma, I think she is like um, gift giving because she's really, really great at remembering things. She sent me a big, for my uh, YouTube 10, 10th anniversary, she sent me like a big frame that said 10 with all words and whatever. It Very, very, very thoughtful. And a card separately. These are things that, that's so on brand for Emma. She will send like flowers. She will send things. Physical items is how she shows her love. But she also shows her love with words because she's very um, like outward on social media as well. Um, but somebody else might not receive it in that way. So if you were someone like that and you sent someone a big gift and you were like, oh, they're going to feel so loved. But if they don't receive love in, in gift giving form, then they won't appreciate that that's what you mean by sending that thing. You know what I mean? Or like if someone needs to be told that you love them and you are going out and buying them things and doing favors for them and whatever, and they're not receiving that as the love that you're actually... I think you understand what I'm saying, but I really do think that at this time, when you have a little bit of time, learn about love languages. Might have been the most random tangent we've ever taken in a beauty video ever. Uh, so because I spoke so much about the Radox bath salts, Radox did contact me. <laughs> a bunch of you on social media, every time I talked about them, were atting Radox saying, you need to send Michaela some bath salts. Anyway, they contacted me and said they'd like to send me some things. They saw that I was a fan and I was like, oh my God, can you please send me <laughs> some bath salts? And um, they don't, they didn't have any of the boxed bath salts, presumably because it's not a new product and it's not something they promote. So they sent me a bunch of other things. They sent me um, this, what's the other thing I've got? Oh yeah, this is the aromatherapy body wash and this, which is a bath soak. They're fine. They are fine products. If you like the fragrances and all that, fine. I also got some other um, bath salts that are like, you know, sleepy or whatever. They're just not the same. They just don't do the same thing. They're not giving me that Radox feeling. Um, and so I, I very much appreciate Radox that you sent me those things. If you want to send me like a year's supply of the, the boxed ones, I'll be forever in your debt. Right, just a couple more things. I've got the um, Head and Shoulders. <laughs> I haven't even looked at this. Men Ultra Hair Booster with Caffeine. This is Lee's shampoo. I always include Head and Shoulders because I don't, with Ultra Booster, obviously like... um. He thinks he's losing his hair. He's not losing his hair. I love Head & Shoulders, personally. I couldn't use it for a long time because it, it strips colour out of your hair. So if you've got hair coloured, hair colour? If you've got coloured hair, it will help to fade your hair colour, which is not necessarily what you want, if that's the colour you want. Um, but right now, it's no problem, I can use it. There used to be an Apple one that I was obsessed with, and it gives me the shiniest, shiniest hair. Really like Head & Shoulders. Um, Sanctuary Body Wash. 
this I've spoken again previously many many times to the point where I may stop including these in my favorites Sanctuary have sent me loads of stuff over the years I've just got like a stash of Sanctuary body products I like the fragrances of these things but I wouldn't purchase them I wouldn't go out of my way to buy an expensive body wash like that because it's not a scent that's kind of lingering. I might buy a nice bubble bath, which you could use that as a bubble bath. I would buy sanctuary body products like creams and stuff. The scrub is amazing, the sugar scrub. Um, but the body wash I have because they sent it to me and I'm using it up. I am trying to move over into solid products. So steadily I'm, I'm trying to pick up and test different things. So I will keep you posted as to what works, what doesn't work. If you've got any suggestions, Milo is calling me. Milo is upstairs right now with the dog. Should we see what he's got to say? What are you doing, Miles? Mummy? Yeah? If you come upstairs and man it, I do a really cute thing. Okay, I'm coming up. It is tough to get time to film on my own right now. Um, oh, I have one last thing, which is the Beauty Outlet Gel Polish Remover. This wasn't specific, I mean, I bought this for gel polish a long, long time ago, but I'm out of breath because I ran up and downstairs. <sighs> We've got a dog with us now. He's just come to sit next to me down here. He's just patrolling to see what's going on, what he's been missing. Um, so yeah, gel polish remover. I haven't had regular gels for a while, but I have had acrylics with gel overlay. Um, I basically just had this because it was like a hardcore nail polish remover. So I used it up recently trying to get off my gels, my acrylics, and I have a little bit left in another bottle, thankfully, so that I can continue to do my nails somewhat. But they chip so easily. It just really reminds me why I ended up going to acrylics. It's not about the length, but because I have longer nails, I can get away with longer times between my appointments because they don't look as crazy with the regrowth. But I'm really, really missing having my nails done right now because constantly before, before filming, like I've got a little chip on my thumb. And before, like my nails would chip really quickly. And then before I could actually film, I'd have to paint my nails. I don't know if I have to, but I feel like I have to. I did find one last product. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, um, but I got this in my, uh, 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 what is it called? FabFitFun box. Um, which by the way, if you're interested in FabFitFun, I personally really enjoy the subscription. I'll leave a code for like a small amount of, it's like a kickback, you you buy it, I buy it, you know. We both get a little bit of something um, below. I think that the summer box will probably be like the end of the summer. Anyway, so I got this in my FabFitFun box and it was crazy. It's a coffee scrub. Always want to try a coffee scrub. People say it's great for cellulite. Um, I now think that's probably complete BS. But the main problem with it is I take baths rather than showers. And I didn't think about when I used it, the fact that using a coffee scrub in a very hot bath is basically making a bath of coffee. So I used a few handfuls, not even a lot of them, <laughs> a lot of the, the product, but a few handfuls and... I was sitting then in a bath of coffee and I had to clean the whole bath, have a shower, get rid of it all. It was an absolute nightmare. Would not recommend any kind of coffee scrub for that reason because it was difficult to get off everything. I just found it, little grinds, everything. It was in my hair, little, ugh, nightmare, absolute nightmare. Wouldn't recommend. Um, so that's it for my empties. I have got a video coming up, um, just kind of updating you on what's going on with Project Pan because I've decided to put that on pause just to kind of explain why. Uh, but I will still be doing my monthly empties and um, I'm excited because I've put my project plan on hold to see where we can go in terms of um, slightly more creative content and trying some more different products because I feel like it's been a while since I've played with all the makeup I've got. Uh, so thanks for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, I will see you guys next time. Bye.